G'day guys and gal, the Space Marine Legions were a bunch of tough cookies, gene enhanced super soldiers that could curb stomp you into atoms, whilst the main template was the same, you know, tall, bulky, strong and hectic erectile dysfunction, there were a few key differences between the mind, body and spirit of each legion. Differences that were used to create unique strengths. Almost any planet in the galaxy could have been conquered by any of the legions, but their methodology derived from their strength would dramatically impact how their conquering would go, how much it would cost, and how many style points they would get. Before we get started, since I'm just coming off a one week ban from YouTube, which you know, if you know the algorithm, that is a massive kick to the balls, my monthly subscribers have dropped from a near all time high to edging towards a big low. God damn it to me. So I'm doing a rallying call. I know there are a number of you who watch, maybe enjoy, probably not, and haven't clicked that juicy subscribe button. But I know, I know, I ain't asking for your soul for free. At 500,000 subscribers, I'm getting a Warhammer tattoo and I'll probably do like a hectic Q&A while I'm getting the tattoo and then upload it. So by you giving me your sub, you're bringing forth that fateful day ever closer. And if you have any tattoo ideas, then message them to me on Discord. I'd like to get something custodies related, but I'm cautious about accidentally getting like a fascist tattoo. But if any of you guys are good sketches and come up with a cool concept, I'll more than happily buy it off you if that's what I end up going for. But yeah, slap the subscribe button like the Emperor wanted to slap Magnus's bright red ass. And if you're already subscribed, then click that bell. Today we'll go over the key strengths of each of the original Space Marine Legions, as well as discuss if they have any secondary, more subtle strengths worth mentioning. Uh, let's get into it. Kicking us off with the Dark Angels because not only are they the best legion, but they are also the first. Annoyingly though, the Dark Angels specific strength isn't the most obvious, which ironically unveils their actual strength as being extremely versatile. The Dark Angels are the legion the Emperor uses for the most unknown eldritch horrors in the galaxy. Due to their specific wings, like the Dreadwing or the Deathwing, as well as many secret specialist squads within their ranks, the Angels have a counter to literally everything. Even the Crave, which are easily one of the most deadly and ancient and Xeno races in the galaxy were unable to defeat the Dark Angels despite how retardedly overpowered they were. I can guarantee that many other legions would have lost to the Crave if not suffered obscene casualties, since beating the Crave required massive amounts of versatility and seriously forbidden war crime tier weapons, both of which were the Dark Angel's strength. Legion 2's greatest strength is playing hide and seek. For 10,000 years, nobody knows where they are or what happened to them. The Emperor's children's greatest strength, which was also their greatest weakness, was their pursuit of perfection. They would always seek to improve themselves, whether it be by their military discipline or combat prowess. As a result of this, the Emperor's children had some of the most disciplined and tactical Astartes in the galaxy as well as some of the best swordsmen and duelists there was. Before their fall into depravity, the Emperor's children had some of the most legendary and willful space marines ever. Saul Tarvitz was able to lead a small damaged army of loyalist marines against the full might of the traitor legions with numerous Primarchs, Titans and orbital support. Yet they still inflicted massive amounts of damage upon the traitor forces. Others like Solomon Demeter and Rylanor are other standouts. The Iron Warriors are a bit more of an obvious one. Their strength is their mastery of siege warfare, both attacking and defending. Although they are more renowned for their ability to siege an enemy fortress, having the will, determination, and tactical knowledge to be able to crack any nut in the galaxy. They can also create the most unbreakable fortresses as well. Barbaros Dantioch created such a viciously monstrous fortress that he, along with only 30 iron warriors and a bunch of crude ogre clones, were able to hold out against thousands of traitor iron warriors, multiple titans, and a shitload of guardsmen, slaughtering thousands before then taking over the enemy flagship and escaping, blowing up their own fortress in the process, which destroyed a traitorous Imperator Titan. The Iron Cage humiliated Rogal Dawn and the Imperial Fist, cementing Perturabo and his Iron Warriors as the superior Siege Masters. Iron Warriors also had very stable Gene Seed, Iron Within. Now I could just say that the White Scar's strength is their ability to rail a massive slug of speed and then do burnouts on their jet bikes, but there is more to it than that. The White Scars are legendary outriders, meaning they can skirmish very effectively, they can act as general shock troops due to their speed and ferocity of their assaults, and their fleet is very hard to combat, due to how flexible and fast moving it is. Many White Scars are also master swordsmen, meaning that every melee engagement with the White Scars would leave the opposing force worse off. But best of all, the White Scars possess basic common sense and the ability to reason, making them unique amongst the legions. The Space 
wolves were masters of shock and awe tactics, tearing into enemy lines in mass engagements of melee slaughter. There were very few enemies, even legions, who would weather a space wolf charge. As soon as the Sisters of Silence began nullifying the Thousand Sun Psycho powers, the wolves tore through their lines like butter. Individual wolf squads also have a lot of independence, able to act as one-man armies via their very experienced wolf lords. As evident by that time, a single Space Wolf squad was able to liberate a world that was being tormented by a full army of Dark Eldar. The Imperial Fists are up next and yeah, yeah, sure, siege experts, however definitely leaning more towards the defense aspect rather than the offense like the Iron Warriors. Now while I did say that the Iron Warriors were the better siege masters due to their ability to both attack and defend with extreme effectiveness, the Imperial Fists are better siege defense experts. They just kind of suck at siege offense when compared to the Iron Boys. The Emperor chose the Imperial Fists as the Praetorians of Terra, and he let Rogel Dawn be the architect of Terra's defense. A defense that allowed three Loyalist Legions to hold off twice their number in Traitor Legions, not to mention enemy Titans, Demons, Beastmen, and other cannon fodder. The Imperial Fists would construct fortresses and leave garrisons on worlds they had made compliant, thus ensuring a stable chain of loyal worlds left in their wake. All of this together means the Fists are incredibly reliable and consistent. It also doesn't hurt that they produce Sigismund the greatest Astartes warrior to ever live. On the flip side of consistency and reliability, we have the Night Lords. Yes, they are stealthy, but that isn't their true talent and strength. It's their obscene effectiveness with psychological warfare and terror tactics that make them so spicy. Ironically, despite the calls to punish the Night Lords for their obscene war crimes, they actually inflict the least amount of death and destruction out of any of the legions in the Imperium, as they would rather skin 20 babies and livestream it to the world's populace rather than orbitably bomb the planet into submission. Sure, 20 babies have a pretty fucking shit time, but it prevents the millions of babies that would have been atomized otherwise. So yeah, Night Lords are pacifists confirmed. When it comes to their strengths, the Night Lords are extremely good, with stuff like stealth, infiltration, and terror. They're actually so good to a point that they're pretty shit at almost everything else. Despite their apparent nobility, the Blood Angel's strength is their brutality and shock tactics. They love to drop onto enemy heads or fly in on jetpacks, appearing straight in the heart of the enemy forces. Due to their, uh, gene seed defects, every Blood Angel has the potential of a berserker within them. Them. They specialize in decapitating strikes, often following their Primarch straight into the heart of the enemy force. Having fuck off angel wings helps with that. The Iron Hand's obsession with replacing their cocks with chrome sounds kind of stupid, but it actually does make them stronger and faster. The flesh truly is weak. They were stronger, faster, and more durable than other Astartes. Their great relationship with the Mechanicum also meant they got access to better gear and weapons. Ferris and his Iron Hands were actually considered to be one of the most powerful legions, easily in the top three, with both Gilliman and Horus being sad that he died, since he would have made such an elite ally. It was literally just the matter of the Iron Hands being too angry and charging too deep before the Isvan betrayal was revealed that ruined them. The fact that they were able to charge into four enemy legions by themselves is testament to their powers a legion. The 11th legion is great at self-genocide, as that is the only thing of note they have seemingly accomplished. The world eaters have a lot of weaknesses, but also a couple of solid strengths. Their rage fuels their combat prowess, making each world eater stronger and more durable than other space marines. Their ferocity and lack of concern for their own survival makes them extremely volatile and difficult to fight against. Whilst they are often seen as wild berserkers, which should be exploitable, they have very impressive martial prowess, with those fighting them often noting that despite their ferocity, there is a lot of skill and finesse that goes into each world eater warrior. Combining the two makes them wildly deadly in melee, even more deadly than the space wolves. The ultramarines are the ultimate jack of all trades. They are not number one in anything, but they are great at everything. However, their real strength lies in their logistical and administrative mastery. This sounds boring, but it means they have more efficient and effective supply lines, thus they have the largest legion and the best equipped legion. They also put a lot of emphasis on battle tactics and doctrine, never just unnecessarily Leroy Jenkinsing into the enemy or doing random risky shit. That's not to say they just play it safe. Many ultramarine tactics are so sophisticated that even a small misstep will result in the entire plan falling apart and the Ultramarines getting sodomized. Fortunately for them, their strength in that area prevents that from happening 99 out of 100 times. Now we have the Death Guard who are unbelievably resilient, not just in terms of being able to smoke more crack than everyone else without overdosing, but with their actual physical durability. They are so much more tanky than the other legions, including the Iron Hands. A Death Guard warrior was once shot numerous times, impaled on multiple jagged bars of iron, which put literal holes in his torso, and then after he went to walk on with his
his brothers for a couple days and then caught the swing of a hammer of a Thunder Warrior before he finally died. It was noted numerous times by the other Space Marines with him, non-Death Guard Space Marines, that he should have died days ago, and no one actually knew how he was able to keep standing and moving. Since becoming a bunch of smelly fat boys, their resilience has only increased. The Thousand Sons were a flawed legion, but arguably the most powerful due to their obscene strength and their psycho ability. Psychers are overpowered. A Thousand Sun in a duel against any other Astartes can literally just boil their blood without much effort. If it wasn't for the intervention of the Custodes and Sisters of Silence, as well as Magnus blinding his legion, then the Space Wolves would have gotten absolutely destroyed on Prospero. Time and time again, the psychic power of the Thousand Sons has made each of them a one-man army. There is next to no other legionnaires that can take a Thousand Sun Sorcerer one-on-one. -on -one. They are just too overpowered. The Lunar Wolves have a similar strength to that of the Blood Angels and the Space Wolves. They were ruthless killers, almost barbarians in their combat doctrine, as they drop potted into the thick of battle and relish in the slaughter. In saying that though, they're a bit more generalist and versatile than the Space Wolves or Blood Angels not relying totally on their shock and awe tactics for victory. This stems from their Primarch Horus being such a brilliant tactical commander, who was able to use his warriors for any theater of war. Except probably stealth. I don't think I've ever seen a stealthy Lunar Wolf. The Word Bearers were actually a very, very powerful legion. They were easily one of the largest and had strict, almost fanatical battle doctrine. After the Emperor gave them a smack for being too religious, their rate of compliance skyrocketed to the point where they were now the number one legion in terms of compliance rate. Total compliance is no, but definitely rate of compliance, yes. They achieved this due to their extreme ruthlessness, basically destroying every world they encountered, even if the world wanted to join the Imperium. Probably not the best way to go about things, but they had some anger issues to deal with. Prior to this genocide streak, they were also very charismatic, a strength they used to turn the other legions to the traitor's cause. The Salamanders were great huggers, one big embrace from a Sally and you forgot the horrors of your life, so it is pretty funny that their other strengths include using horrific war crime tier flamethrowers to great effect. Due to their forge and engineering mastery as well as their Primarch's genius, the Salamanders have a shitload of high tier and unique gear. On top of the fact that they are quite self-sufficient, able to manufacture Astartes weapons, ammo and war plate on their own forge ships. They are also wildly compassionate, but within 40k, that probably isn't a strength. The Raven Guard's strength is obvious, the absolute undisputed masters of stealth. After all, their Primarch can literally turn invisible, which is an ability a few Raven Guard have somewhat inherited. Their power armor is literally engineered differently in order to be more quiet, and they have unique stealth technology that no other Legion possesses. They are more stealthy than both the Alpha Legion and Night Lords, however they lack the psychological warfare of the Bat Boys or the infiltration of the Alpha Lads. Raven Guard also employ the use of powerful jump pack warriors, hence are really good at assassinating enemy leadership. And finally, the Alpha Legion. The Alpha Legion are god tier at infiltration. They use stealth by hiding in plain sight as opposed to staying in the shadows. They also have a massive network of talented human agents which empowers their infiltration even further, as people don't usually expect normal humans to be trusted agents of Astartes Legions. Their Legion is also massive as a result of its low casualty warfare combined with its stable gene seed and active recruitment. They can literally topple entire worlds purely by planting a few human agents on them, meaning the Alpha Legion has created compliant worlds without an Astartes even being present. Not something many other legions can claim. If only they figured out who the fuck they were actually fighting for, then they could genuinely be the most powerful legion. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where there is not only a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai for only a dollar, but also a bunch of live action nude cosplay photos. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more strong content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.